Hi, welcome to Zion's Banner. Thought I'd take a few minutes to comment on a recent sermon done, gently, but hopefully firmly, because it touches an issue that's so important both to Zion's Banner and I think to good Bible teaching and to what the church really needs in this day and age. Uh, a very well-known preacher, Andy Stanley, uh, remarked that it is possible that maybe it would be good to, for the church to unhitch itself from the Old Testament, or I'll use the term the Hebrew Scriptures. I'd like to take just a few minutes to comment, although I was not there at his church to hear the sermon, I think that some of the remarks I've seen written down as uh, transcriptions of that sermon do need to be addressed. Uh, what happens when you unhitch the horse from the cart? Can you really get anywhere? That's the metaphor that I want to use today. That's the mental picture I want to paint because I believe that if the church unhitches itself from the Hebrew Scriptures or the Old Testament, it will be unhitching the horse from the cart and it will get nowhere. I want to do it by looking at Jesus' attitude in using the Old Testament for witnessing. Andy Stanley suggested that the church's evangelism or the proclamation of the good news of Messiah Jesus is being hindered by the church not unhitching itself from the Old Testament. So I thought it might be really good to look at the one who would know best how to proclaim his message. The one whom Christians call their Lord and Master. Did he believe that the Old Testament was a hindrance to the spread of the good news? Did he believe it was a hindrance to his own message? And I thought no place would be better to go to than the Gospel of John itself. And so I'm going to give you a little background on the Gospel of John. Now this is what I love to do in Zion's Banner, is to exegetically teach, to talk about the passage in its background, and then to relate it to apologetics, and then to go ahead and give some application. John is probably written after the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed, and John's purpose is to assure the believers that they are the right covenant community to belong to. The question is, after the temple is destroyed, oh my, what do we do now? How do we know that we belong to the right group? The group that God will bless, the group that is connected to him. And so John writes these things and he even says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know you have eternal life. And so he is assuring his community that they are the right community. And so that is the background of John, and it's so terribly important because the language of John is structured around John's intent for the believer. In fact, John is written more for the believer than it is actually written for the person who is not following Jesus, interestingly enough. And so I thought I'd go to John chapter 3 and see if really it's a good idea for us to unhitch the Old Testament from the message of Messiah. Let me give you some background when this conversation starts. It starts with a teacher of the Jews, a man familiar with the Old Testament named Nicodemus. And actually he comes to Jesus by night because Jesus is not popular with the leadership of Israel at this point. And do remember that if John is indeed writing this, and I'm certain he is, and so are other sound scholars, that he's writing this after the temple, it would make sense to emphasize uh, Nicodemus coming by night in order to ask Jesus questions. In fact, Nicodemus starts very interestingly. He confesses that God must be with Jesus because no man could do the things that Jesus does unless God is with him. And so we move on in that section and Jesus ends up giving a conundrum in a sense to Nicodemus. Nicodemus should have understood this idea, but he didn't really make the connections. Uh, and so he should have understood what rebirth was because the Old Testament speaks of the circumcision of the heart, which is what we call being born again, but that's the terminology used in the Old Testament, that God would give people a new heart. And that confuses Jesus, and Jesus ends up talking to Nicodemus about those things, and ends up saying to Nicodemus in verse 12, if I've told you earthly things and you do not believe me, how will you believe me if I tell you heavenly things? Nicodemus, if I give you a comparison and a metaphor that makes sense, where I point to something in the real world to explain a spiritual truth and you can't make the connection, how am I going to end up explaining these deeper things to you? And so we move on from that section and he ends up talking further 
And he says, no one has ascended into heaven but him who has come down from heaven. That is the Son of Man. And he makes that statement and then he immediately goes to Numbers. The book of Numbers to pick an obscure incident in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew Scriptures. An incident that Jews would be familiar with because it was read in their synagogues, but, but not an incident that you would necessarily even think of turning to, to evangelize. And he says, Moses, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. And whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And then we get to that famous verse, John 3, 16. For, um, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, what does Jesus do in speaking to Nicodemus? Does he unhitch the Old Testament from his proclamation of the gospel? Far be it, he picks this incident in Numbers with a serpent and with God delivering the children of Israel from his judgment due to their unbelief through the building of a metal serpent and anyone who had faith to trust God's means of rescue would indeed be saved by God's grace through faith. And so the very background of John 3.16 itself is an Old Testament background. He uses something from what Jews call the Torah, the five books of Moses, in order to be the backdrop for John 3.16. You see, Jesus didn't necessarily feel that the proclamation of the gospel should ever be unhitched from the Old Testament. In fact, he weds them together in a verse used over and over again in sharing the good news of Jesus the Messiah with people. The problem with Andy Stanley's approach is he does not properly value or look at the way value the Hebrew Scriptures. He is more concerned about the modern mindset and so he is ready to go ahead and disconnect from this book that is so hard to understand and so far removed from our culture for the most part. I speak from a Jewish culture and there's a great deal of connection. But if you looked at America at large, we no longer live in an agricultural society. And for the non-Jewish part of the United States, there is not a much of a feeling of connection to the customs mentioned in the front part of your Bible, which, by the way, forms two-thirds of the scriptures. And so he feels that this is somehow a problem that we should unhitch the front part of the Bible from the proclamation of the good news of Messiah. But what we see is that Jesus himself, who is the master, who is the Lord of the Christian, doesn't feel this way at all in his presentation of the gospel. But the other problem is the pragmatism. I got to hear Josh McDowell recently, and he said, in past generations, what people believed is if it was true, it would work. But what this present generation feels is that if it works, it's true. And so there's a tendency towards pragmatism. There's a tendency to say, if it works, it must be true. But there's a danger with that mindset. It's the wrong question to add, ask. I like to tell the story of the Polish scientist. And I've used it in a previous blog, but I'm going to use it again. This Polish scientist wanted to see how far frogs with no legs could jump. And so he ended up getting this frog and he ended up saying jump and the frog jumped 12 feet and then he cut off a leg and he said jump and the frog only jumped eight feet and then he cut off another leg two legs gone and he said jump and the frog jumped five feet and he cut off the third leg of the frog and he said jump and the frog jumped three feet finally he cut off the last leg of the frog and he said jump and the frog did not move and he said, jump again, and the frog did not move. And in his scientific journal, he wrote, I conclude scientifically that frogs with no legs can't hear. The problem is that if you start with the wrong premise, you will always end up at the wrong place. And there is a danger because Pastor Stanley has started with the wrong premise. It's totally wrong, and it's out of place. The gospel message is an offense to the modern mind. The idea that God would indeed become a man and would indeed die in order to pay the penalty for our transgressions is 
an idea that the ASPCA would, well, various groups would not approve of. The animal sacrifices of the Old Testament that point to Jesus' work would be a problem for the society uh, for the protection or against the cruelty to animals, the ASPCA. The modern mind is out of touch with the uh, realities spiritually that, that are so necessary. The disconnect that we have from the source of beauty and truth, God. And so the problem is, is that if you say that the Old Testament must be disconnected, the Hebrew Scriptures, from the proclamation of God, the Gospel because it does not suit the modern mind, then you minds will say that the Gospel should not be proclaimed at all because it does not suit the modern mind. This form of pragmatism will not work and ultimately will work against the Church. We need to get back to the mind of the Apostles and Jesus when it comes to the Hebrew Scriptures that they centered around Messiah that they centered around God's big story and that Jesus was the central player in that big story. So I respectfully applaud Andy Stanley's desire to see the gospel proclaimed. I'm not there to go ahead and be nasty to a brother. But on the other hand, I'm here to say that he has made an error in his thinking that the church must not buy into if it's going to continue to be effective. The problem with the modern mind not being very well suited to the Old Testament does not mean we unhitch from the Old Testament. It means that we explain it. And that's one of the reasons that Zion's banner exists, is to put the whole story together and to make much of Messiah through God's big story. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to react to this recent event. I know others have, and hopefully my voice will be one among many, but will be a significant voice and will have made some points this afternoon. It's good to be in California, and it's good to be able to do a message like this.